I have Parkinson's, but the Parkinson's don't have me. Mm -hmm. And that's what this group is about, strong and steadfast. Uh, we also have a guest of honor here. I'd love for him to stand up and introduce himself in this title. Uh, hi, I'm John Delegate H.C. Cordoza, I represent uh, Hampton Associates here. Welcome. And uh, newly reelected to his second term. And uh, I'm happy to count AC as a friend. And uh, so. Now, now yeah. I have to say something. When I was invited by Sheriff Montgomery to come to a outing of the representative party, um, I was um, talking with uh, his secretary and just kind of out there, and you got to tell I have Parkinson's and my thought just went straight out. But, okay, I know I was going with this. Um, they heard that there was a Parkinson's support group in Hampton. They heard there was a Parkinson's support group in Hampton at the Hyatt Place. I was talking to his secretary. Chief of Staff. Chief of Staff, even higher. And, um, she said, yeah, the Hyatt. I said, yes, that's what, and we put two and two together, and that's how they end up here and some other stuff that we're working on. Our group is growing, our family is growing. I believe in, when I was in the military, I left martial arts. If you throw a punch like this, you're gonna hurt your hand. If you throw a punch like this, I'm still gonna hurt my hand because I'm Parkinson's. <laughs> but the point is this, as long as we stand like this, we're stronger together instead of like this, working mm -hmm. off. There are a couple of announcements that Drunk Stronger Steadfast has grown. We have a new administrative manager mailing out flyers and Gail, please stand <laughs> up. She's been mailing out flyers for me. We actually have a director of sales. Eric, will you please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> raised uh found two sponsors to sponsor us so sad to say y'all are stuck with me through 2025. <laughs> <laughs> drew came up with we'll come up with a joke every meeting so this is my joke a family of ants went to a family reunion and the mom and dad aunt said enjoy yourself and the little ant was walking he just stopped and he's looking and he didn't move. And the mom walked up to him and said, what's wrong? And he goes, I can't tell the aunts from the uncles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got to laugh. <laughs> I told you it was corny. <laughs> so that was my joke. But, uh, oh, my God, that was I told y'all it was corny, cool, okay? But, but again, life is good for the soul, it's good for the body. That's the way we are here. We're not going to sit around with the press sitting on our hands worrying about tomorrow because, I mean, you know what tomorrow is going to bring? I'm going to open my eyes. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to call my girlfriend. We're going to get together. I'm going to go out to eat. I'm going to wait for the summer to come back where I can go to the beach. But no, we, we, we've already planned a trip to Wait, wait there's a girlfriend? Three. Oh. <laughs> Look, I am not big, like I said, I have Parkinson's, but, but <laughs> there's no rings. <laughs> but, but, but again, we're here to have fun and not sit around on our hands and worry about what we have. Also, I'd like to, before the meeting start, and I hope to becomes the director of the Tom and Honeycutt YMCA, Stephen, he's a new uh, general manager. He's allowed us to come in anytime we want and use the pool. They have a full boxing room, bicycles, everything else like that. If you do not have silver sneakers, Strong and Steadfast will make a way for you to go. Everybody, I want all the guys, anybody with Parkinson's, women too, be able to, we're gonna pick a day, two days out of the month, we're gonna get together, we're gonna to go to the pool. So if I'm in the pool and Dirk, he loves to box and 
Okay, I'm gonna say this, so please don't laugh. That man right there outpedaled me on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> His setting was on seven, mine was on three. <laughs> and after I got off, I was winded, and he wasn't, and I was just like, okay, and I'm trying to make it down the stairs, and he just walked right down the stairs. My point is this. We're laughing, we're having fun, we're not sitting around talking about what, what we have. Let's forget about what we have. I love what the what Pastor Matt Scott started saying. Fear, fear not. Fear, why will we be afraid? 365 mm -hmm. in the Bible, it says fear not. I'm not gonna fear what I have. That's my lovely daughter sitting out there. I have a gorgeous son out there. Everybody says, I cannot deny that girl. She <laughs> looks just like me. So everybody who saw her was like, okay, you cannot deny her, but I would not, would not deny her. But my point is this. This group is designed to have fun, live, spread the joy of what we bring out of this group. Uh, I spent time with Leroy, I spent time with Dirk, I talked to Nami, uh, Moochie, before you leave, I'm gonna get your number and you're gonna, I'm gonna bug you to pieces. I'm gonna get you out of the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and that's trip to Waynesboro, whites are not permitted, so it's only gonna be the guys. So, I mean, uh, but, but no, seriously, uh, we're gonna get started. I want to introduce our guest speaker. Well, George, let me ask one more question. There's sure. a wonderful amount of pizza and food over there. What would you like us to do with that? Anytime anybody wants to get up and help themselves, uh, if anybody wants to get something right now. Uh, yeah, why, why don't we take about five minutes, uh, let people get stand up and stretch if you want to get some pizza. That way, you know, we're not all over here while Kelly's starting to talk. Okay. Well, there's plenty of pizza, brownie. I hear somebody likes the cheese stuff. And there's also brownies over here. So we have brownies, we have pizza. No about you. Perfect. Thank you. You look fine to the AC. Don't don't worry about that. That's right. I was supposed to stay home. Thank you. Thank you. 
Just put it on the chair in front of you there. Okay. You just, okay, just there. turn the chair around. You want to want to turn the chair around? Chances are Kelly won't sit on that hat. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, and, and again, before everybody leaves, Kelly, yeah. Kelly gets started. We're actually going to be drawing names because next month we're actually having a potluck Christmas party. And the name you draw is for the gift person you're going to get. But there's twists. 
So if I give give and somebody else wants that gift, oh, yeah. so we're gonna have like I said, we come here to have fun. And and, and well, I guess I did from Kathy Lewis wife. Well, I'm gonna turn it over to Kelly, where she can get started. Sounds good. Hi everybody. Hi Kelly. Thank you for having me. I love this group so far. You guys might be one of my favorites. And I like the positivity. Mm -hmm. And um, just like he said, you know, you can't let Parkinson's rule your life. Mm -hmm. You have to focus on positive, do everything you can, and everything else falls in place. So you guys are, I'm happy to be here, and I think this is just a great group. So I'm excited for you and the growth. Um, but thank you, Dirk and Gale, for inviting me tonight. Um, a little bit about myself. I work for Medtronic. Um, we are a global company. I am in the neuromodulation division where I only do deep brain stimulation, but we have cardiac pacemakers, we have diabetic pumps, we have tons of uh, medical device equipment, but I am in the Parkinson's essential tremor movement disorder community. I've been with Medtronic for, it'll be 11 years in March. Uh, I live in Chesapeake. I have been working with all of the local neurosurgeons, neurologists, um, to just spread the word about deep brain stimulation. Uh, so before I dive into what DBS is, it's really important to understand that DBS is just a piece of the pie. So being involved in a support group, making sure medication is being taken on time, making sure you're doing physical therapy, making sure you're staying hydrated, making sure you're getting enough rest. All of that as a whole works together to give you the best quality of life. You know, not one thing, it's not gonna be just the medication. It's not gonna be just coming to the support group once a month. It's not gonna be just, you know, DBS. Everything works together as a whole. So how many of you are familiar with deep brain stimulation? Okay, all right, all right. When I started doing this 11 years ago, and I would speak to support groups, a lot of people hadn't heard of DBS, but believe it or not, it's been FDA approved since 1997. So it's not new technology, it's been around for a long time. So we were originally FDA approved for um, essential tremor in 1997, and in 2002 for Parkinson's disease. So let me grab my here. So again, just like I said, DBS is just one piece of the pie. Everything all together as a whole is just gonna really improve your quality of life. So DBS is a pacemaker for the brain. It's a battery that sits in beneath, underneath the skin in the chest. It connects to a lead that's deep down into the brain. And what it does is sends electrical stimulation to a targeted area to treat the motor symptoms of Parkinson's. <clears throat> Patients with Parkinson's experience on time and off time. Are you guys familiar with on and off time? So when the medication is you know, working, it's kicked in, patients are feeling well, their symptoms are well managed, and then off time is when the medication has worn off and they might be slow, stiff, rigid, experience tremor. So with Parkinson's, most patients are experiencing these drastic fluctuations, this on time, off time, on time, off time. The goal of DBS, because it's sending a continuous amount of electrical stimulation, is to smooth out that on and off time so that you're not experiencing such drastic changes. So there is certain criteria for patients to be a candidate for DBS. Not everybody with Parkinson's is a good candidate. Somebody has to be diagnosed for a minimum of four years. They have to have a, had at least four months of um, side effects to medication. They have to be levodopa responsive. So the Cinemet, uh, patients have to be responsive to that. If they were to you know, take the levodopa and nothing changed, they might not be a, a candidate for the DBS. 
Aside from tremor, so tremor is something, even though it doesn't respond to levodopa, it can still respond to the deep brain stimulation. So um, again, it has to be the right candidate, but when it is the right candidate, it can work really well. So the first three to five years, sometimes even longer, medication works really well. You know, patients take their meds on time, they seem pretty smooth throughout the day. Eventually, the medication starts to lose its effectiveness or you're having to hike up the medication dose so much that you're now getting drug-induced side effects. That's really when that window opens for somebody to start talking to their physician about whether or not they would be a good candidate. Um, really, I think speaking to your neurologist earlier, even when you're not ready for it, just so you can do your homework, you can learn about it. No one is gonna make a decision to have brain surgery in a month or, you know. So most people have to do their homework, understand what's all involved. Um, so it's, it's never too early to speak to your neurologist about it, but there is a right time of when somebody is a candidate and it's usually a minimum of four years that they have to be diagnosed with Parkinson's. And then yeah, I should point out that if medication is no longer effective, medication's really not controlling the symptoms anymore, um, cognitive changes come into play, you can fall outside of that patient candidacy. So you do wanna make sure it's the right time. Yes, that was kind of, so, Sorry, my screen was delayed here. All right, so what to expect if you are considering getting deep brain stimulation? You have a stage one, which is where the lead goes into the brain. This procedure, you are slightly sedated for the opening. They make a small little opening in the head on either side. We're treating bilateral, both sides of the body. And um, the reason for you being awake is because we wanna do testing in the operating room. So we may have you, you know, open and close, do the finger taps, the flip flop back and forth, all of these things that we are used to doing in the neurology office. We wanna see before stimulation and then after stimulation while we are in the operating room so that if we have any side effects to the, the stimulation, at that time we can move the lead within millimeters so that we're in the sweet spot. The second part of the procedure is the stage two, and that is general anesthesia. Somebody is fully asleep for that part, and that's where we implant the battery, and we connect the lead that we put in a week to two weeks prior and connect everything. Everything is fully implanted, nothing is left external. Um, so that's a, that is a um, general anesthesia. You go home that same day, then we do wait another two to four weeks to turn the device on for the first time. So we like to make sure any swelling, all healing from the first part of the procedure is done so that when we turn the DBS on for the first time, we have you know good results. Uh, a lot of patients will experience, uh, we call it a honeymoon period, where just from placing the electrodes in the brain, it activates those cells and patients will have a reduction in tremor or stiffness rigidity, whatever it may be, Parkinson's symptom wise. So we like to let all of that settle so that we can get a good baseline, then we turn the DBS on for the first time. Any questions so far? Are you taking medication? The surgery or the just DBS in general? Medication in between. Do you take medication in between? Getting That's deep. what he was asking. Yeah, your regular medication to keep taking it. Yes, absolutely. You do keep taking your medication. Majority of the time, once we turn the DBS on for the first time, we evaluate you to see how you're doing with medication and DBS to see if you need a reduction in meds. Most patients do have a significant reduction in medication, but majority of the time, patients do still stay on a certain amount of meds, yep. That is one of the goals of DBS, is not only, you know, are we trying to smooth out the on time and the off time, 
The other piece is cutting back on some of that medication so that let the DBS do what the meds were doing without the drug-induced side effects. So we do turn the DBS on in the clinic with the neurologist. And during that visit, we have you come in off of your Parkinson's medication. Again, we wanna see you at baseline. We wanna see you off. And then we do the programming, then we'll have you take your medication. Like I said, we wanna see you on both. And then from there, we can make adjustments to medication or the stimulation if needed. Kelly. Yes. Do you know of any person that's had DBS um, that's been diagnosed with both obsessive tremors and Parkinson's? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so you can still get a candidate? Yes. And if it's tremor only, do you have any other symptoms besides tremor? No, actually I was diagnosed with both types of Parkinson's. So I had the tremors, obsessive tremors, and the the stiffness, rigidity. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was, I was blessed to have both. <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> Such a blessing. Yeah. 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 Well, that is a great question. <laughs> and DB, so positive around here. <laughs> um, DBS does help with not only tremor, but it helps with the stiffness, the rigidity, the slow movements, all of that. So yes, there are different areas in the brain that we target for essential tremor versus Parkinson's. So it would be important for you to consult your neurologist to find out, you know, are we wanting to target just the tremor, which is a certain area of the brain, or are we wanting to target the Parkinson's symptoms? Um, and that's a different area. Are your symptoms responsive to medication, aside from the tremor? Your stiffness, rigidity? Um, they've adjusted my medication four different times this year. Okay. Uh, they're considering adjusting it again. Okay. My medication, general medication, for it, I'm also slowing down with speech wise, but um, uh, we're, we're looking at the Okay, so a good gauge for what DBS would help with um, is it does have to be true idiopathic Parkinson's, um, but we're also indicated for a central tremor. Um, but we need to be sure that the Parkinson's symptoms are responsive to levodopa. So they would have you come in off of medication during the whole patient candidacy, making sure you would be a candidate for it. They would have you come in off of the levodopa they would evaluate you, and then they would have you take the med, and then they would evaluate you again, and they want to see that there's a true improvement between your on time and your off time, because that's a good indication that DBS will help you, aside from the trimmer. Trimmer, again, is the only thing that, even though the medication doesn't help with, the DBS can still help with the trimmer. So, um, our equipment. We have the lead that goes down into the brain. They have four individual contacts and I can pass this around. You can see four individual contact points and during programming we turn on one or two contacts at a time. We don't turn on all of them. So just say initially we turn on this deepest contact and a year later you come in you say oh for some reason I'm experiencing some tremor if we try to adjust this contact and it's no longer giving us the efficacy we want to see, we'll say, okay, let's try the next contact over. So it's adjustable. There is another procedure um, called focus ultrasound where they're lesioning. Um, it's not adjustable. So we're not burning any tissue in the brain. We're not removing any tissue in the brain. We're just sending that electrical stimulation. And within that area, we can adjust where we want to stimulate. So I'll pass this around so you can see the different lead um, contact points. Start over here. So our battery, um, we have something called BrainSense technology. And this is what is the latest and the greatest in the DBS world. Um, we are actually able to record certain brain frequencies. 
and we have data that shows certain brain signals correlate with Parkinson's symptoms. So if our battery is tracking certain frequencies that are related to Parkinson's, we can then say, okay, if we're detecting this brain frequency on this particular contact, let's stimulate there and see if we can't reduce that brain frequency to smooth out the symptoms. All of this is laying the foundation for adaptive stimulation. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but in the future, um, we will have a deep brain stimulator that automatically adjusts. So it senses, you know, these brain frequencies, beta that are corresponding with Parkinson's symptoms. It then might increase stimulation, but then if it's not detecting that any longer, but it's detecting something called gamma, have you ever seen a patient that's very wiggly, squirmy? Mm -hmm. That is dyskinesias. That's a side effect to medication or too much stimulation. Mm -hmm. So then you would want to reduce the stimulator some. So in, right now, our technology just sends a, you know, a current 3.5 milliamps constantly. It doesn't adjust. You have a patient controller where you're allowed to increase and decrease your settings. Um, but eventually in the future, the goal is to have a device that self adjust. Um, so this is really cutting edge technology that's exclusive to Medtronic. That's another surgery though, right? So that's a really good question. So the, it's only the battery. So oh, okay. our devices last three to five years, depending on your settings. Uh, we have a rechargeable option that lasts 15 years, but the patient lays something like this right over top of their skin and tops off the battery, lasts 15 years. The non-rechargeable is three to five years. You don't have to recharge or do anything. Um, but when you're due for a battery replacement, you could then take advantage of the, you know, the latest device, and then you would have access to that feature we wouldn't have to go back into the brain. So for any of the replacements and things like that, we're not going back into the brain, we're just opening the battery pocket, unplugging the old and plugging in the new. So this is a, a diagram of the brain, six, brain sense technology in action. You can, it's, I know it's really small, but down here at the bottom left-hand corner, our battery kind of detects this beta frequency peak and so as we're viewing this on our clinician tablet, we would expect the patient to be slow, stiff, rigid, maybe have some tremor. When we run the BrainSense technology and we are not seeing any peaks, we are, you know, thinking that the patient is not symptomatic, is doing well. So our device is capturing that, which is giving us data when you're not in the clinic the neurologist is able to um, have access to some have access to some of this information. So, so a lot of people think um, when they get DBS that they might be you know they can't do certain things. They're you know you can still travel, you can still swim, you can still do all physical activity um, that you're used to doing. Um, I do say patients who sometimes get the DBS, they feel so well that they're probably doing things they shouldn't be doing, maybe like <laughs> climbing on the roof and fixing something. We would never recommend that, um, but certainly but do not do that. Do not do that. Um, so <laughs> she's going to call you out. But yes, it's not going to limit you from doing certain things. Um, traveling, you can travel with them. Uh, you can have an MRI. So while the DBS is turned on, you can still have an MRI. Our devices are MRI compatible. So I do have a video here. So you can see here on the left-hand side, the patient is shuffling. His DBS is off and his medication, he doesn't have any in his system. And then that is the DDS on with no medication. So you should work more.
I thought it was going to say may require ice cream because there was a <laughs> couple of scenes there where they're eating yeah. ice cream. So, yeah. Thank you. I should bring ice cream to these groups and say, now it's ice cream, Gavin. Yeah. Um, so is most of this covered with insurances? Or it is covered by insurance. Yes. Yep. Fully covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? The husband said it twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the first February of this year was the second. Yeah. Yeah. Because the probes that he had the first time versus the probes now, because you know medicine is always evolving. Right. right. So these probes are a lot better. They have better adjustable capabilities. Uh, so Derek has done really well this time. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was actually, yeah. I was actually told I was a candidate in 2020. Um, right now, I'm Aaron, okay. And, BCU, and uh, I was afraid they would miss my brain, so I was still sticking with the uh, uh, being allowed to go <laughs> But we're finding that every year, um, of course, you're going to get, well, let me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. I'm getting older, not worse. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, we're exploring some about the two yep. yep. Yeah. So it definitely it's indicated for essential tremor as well as Parkinson's disease. So um, I would think that you would have a response to the DBS. The area of the brain that we target is about five to seven millimeters. It's teeny tiny. Um, I will pass around this as well that kind of gives you a visual of the area of the brain that we're targeting and how the electrode, the lead, sits down into the brain. And so when we're programming the device, you can see that not all four contacts make it into that area. So we might not turn on this top contact because it's not in the area that we want to stimulate. So we might turn on this one because that's you know it's sitting right in the sweet spot. So it's really important to work with your neurologist um, to make sure that the device is programmed properly. Um, I mean, it can be, there's a lot of variables. So if I ever meet someone and they say, oh, DBS didn't work for me, there's a lot of questions I have. You know, is the lead in the sweet spot? And it can be within millimeters. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, Kevin. yeah. It can be all, you said just, just the length of it. Is, yeah. And it won't work. That's right. So it has to be in the, in the right sweet device. spot. Yep. Mm -hmm. The neurologist has to program the device properly, um, picking that correct electrode to make sure that's the best one. And by um, the way, she's really good at adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> she is really good at adjusting. <laughs> so you're telling me my fear is if is this off a centimeter? It might not work a millimeter. A millimeter. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 So it's um, rare for it to be misplaced. Mm -hmm. It's rare for it to be misplaced. Um, it's also, we can program around certain things. So just say the lead is sitting a little bit, you know, 
in a certain direction, our two middle contacts are actually segmented so that we can turn off a portion of the electrode, just say that's stimulating slightly out of the area we want, we can program then only this side. So that's directional steering. So I have a, I'm not, a cool question. I have so, a question. So, so I have a question because I was told in February, really embarrassing, I was told in February that, um, and some of the people in the group know, my pastor Matt knows, um, in February I was having problems with my eyes. Of course, you know, Parkinson's does not affect your vision, but the muscle in my eyes are starting to get to the point where some more have to open my eyes and my face yeah. itself. Um, because I won't be able to open my eyelids in the next year, year, well, that was February, it's a year and a half, so coming up really soon, um, will a DBS hurt with that? So it's not something that we directly can say that it helps with. I can say though, if you take your medication, your Parkinson's meds, and that seems to improve while you are on, then it could improve when the DBS is on. Does that make sense? If it's something that fluctuates based on your on time and your off time, then I would say there's a chance it could be responsive to the DBS, but, um, you know, I know some of the local neurologists, they can do Botox on the eyes um, to help, not for cosmetic purposes. <laughs> so they can actually help with that. Patients come in, they have DBS, but then they also get injections um, to help with that. So there's some other options too. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but good question. Any other questions? I could talk all day long about DBS. I don't want to get too much into the weeds. Um, but again, it's, it's really a great option for somebody that's a good candidate. I'm very involved with the local neurologist and the neurosurgeon. So I try to attend most programming sessions. I also go into the surgery. So I bring in the equipment and provide technical support in the operating room. So I'm very involved. <laughs> I meet, oftentimes I meet patients at these groups, and yes. then I know you for the rest, forever and ever. <laughs> and the program that my husband is on and walking do it, she did it. <laughs> All right. Seriously, <clears throat> she did it. Do y'all work like tri-care? Oh yeah, it's, it's covered. Yeah. It's covered. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah. it is. We're doing a lot of veterans yeah. So the, um, there's a really good resource at the Richmond VA Medical Center, which is a Padrick Center. Are you guys familiar with the Padrick Center? No? You are. So I, I don't remember if it's like one of only a handful in the entire country, which is in Richmond. They have a Parkinson's program at the Richmond VA Medical Center. So I do think you have to... Um, enroll in it. I think you have to somehow maybe, and I'm not sure how you get involved. Are you in the Padrick? No. Okay. I've been doing research with the APBA trying to locate them. Okay. That's how I actually ran across the organization. Okay. Yeah, so I um, and can also, there is a neurosurgeon at the Richmond VA in Richmond that implants deep brain stimulation. Mm -hmm. And she also implants at VCU. But what I'm getting at is if you are a veteran, you might be, you might qualify for some resources to get implanted through the VA. And Dr. Katherine Holloway is the neurosurgeon there and she's, she's wonderful. So, a it's a really AC, good are you getting ready to sign up for one of these? I mean, you're a veteran. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not, not yet, huh? <laughs> but you know what's out there. If you, if That's right. Everyone's teacher. Right. Yeah. How long has it been available? In 1997, it was approved for a central tremor. And then in 2002, it was approved for Parkinson's. So it's been around for a very long time. Yep. 
Patients um, get patient controllers. I think I briefly mentioned that. So you're able to make adjustments to your settings in between your office visits with the neurologist. So um, just say we program the device in clinic and then after a few days you get home and you say, oh, I'm still doing good, but I have a little bit of breakthrough tremor on my left side. You could then use your patient controller. It looks like a cell phone, but all it is is a remote to control your device. And you can connect to it and you can make a little adjustment, like a 0.1, a tenth of a million, um, to see if it'll improve the symptom. Um, we can also set up multiple groups. So you can have a group that we might try, um, and then after a few days you say, you know what, I don't really like this group. I like my old group that I was on before they made changes. You could then just switch back to the last setting and you don't have to worry about getting back into the office. One other thing to point out, I'm sorry, I keep thinking of things. Um, for those of you who have done research on deep brain stimulation, there are different techniques for getting the lead in place. The original way is using a stereotactic head frame, which is just this large bulky frame that looks scary, mm -hmm. <laughs> in my opinion. It's just this yeah. big halo round yeah. thing that then gets fixed to the bed. It's very accurate, but it's literally setting coordinates on this frame to get the lead into the desired target. Um, Dr. Salvin at Riverside, um, Dr. Shannon Clark at Norfolk General, Dr. Catherine Holloway at the VA or VCU um, is using something called Next Frame. And it's a mini frame um, designed by Medtronic. Um, actually, Dr. Holloway at the um, at VCU and the VA, she helped design this. Um, so this is something that just gets temporarily mounted over the, the opening. Um, and so you are able to be mobile within reason in the operating room um, and it's much more patient friendly. I like to point that out because some people see videos online and they're terrified of the frame <laughs> and they're awake and you know, there's a lot of fear my around it. Room, but... Dr. Charlotte, and my second one, he didn't use that. He uses this. Oh, he uses on me? He uses on just this little one this over top. Yeah, your head doesn't didn't get okay. fixed at the bed. So. But I'm available if anyone, you know, in the future, you can take one of my cards. If you ever have a question, um, you know somebody that wants to learn more about it, I can set up one-on-one -on -one meetings, anything like that. Well, um, if you ever, like you said, if you will, because that's a group rose. Yeah. Um, we'd love to have you back. Yeah. And I think that was a really great presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for inviting me. There are patient information packets up here, so feel free to help yourself. We don't use the word caregiver here, we use care partner, a spouse. Normally this is where the spouses get and they get a care, and the spouses get a chance to get away from the uh, us with Parkinson's and we get in our group and talk about how our week went and how our week is going and plan the trips and stuff like that. We're going to do a little something different today. Uh, so we're still going to let the ladies do it. Last time, I got to tell y'all, I mean, it was like the ladies can go. And I mean, as soon as I said, like, ladies could go, I mean, ladies yeah. was like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> George, George, would, would either of our other guests like to, <coughs> like to say anything oh. while, while the group's together? Well, I brought some flyers. So we're doing, oh, oh, there's some outside and I can pass them around. We're just going to do a holiday grand illumination on December 1st. So if anybody wanted to come on through, um, we're going to do hot chocolate and cookies and just make it festive. So please just come on over and say hi. Thank you. Yeah, AC, would you like to say anything? Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to thank you guys for inviting me out and just let you know uh, I'm your, uh, your representative. Uh, Feel free to reach out to me in my office. I'm always available. Uh, normally, you're going to get Veronica. Mm -hmm. Probably, like, don't back, don't back. 
brother-in-law does that up in Indiana. Yeah. So it's kind of like stretching and it's, it's more stretching your, keeping the muscles and the nerves loose as possible. Uh, in 2022, I was approved for like 25 visits, 30 visits. Now, various companies, I will not name on Facebook, <laughs> a lot of companies are actually limiting us to four visits. And those four visits, if you don't meet their requirements, not the doctor's requirements, they actually have a, the right to deny you physical therapy, which actually happened to me this year. Uh, Riverside actually saw me declining. This is, that's how I met Mr. Will Parker, the director, and he said, and I quote, we're gonna keep you in physical therapy and we're gonna make sure your insurance company pays for it. And I have Medicare, Medicaid, uh, track here, I have CD, I have everything. And I was still denied. Then I had to file an appeal, which if anybody knows me, like Pastor Matt knows me, mm -hmm. I didn't file the appeal. I just actually talked uh, with Riverside, met with um, Anthem and Caroline, um, Anthem is actually going to get to change their name very, really soon to Caroline, if y'all haven't heard. But to make a long story short, I'm talking with Veronica. Um, one of the things that we're looking to do is to, with Mr. AC Cordova's help, is to put a bill in motion to stop this. Not just in Virginia, but I'm, my goal is the Bozeman's Act. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to put that one out there. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> good. Like, like I said, we're here to laugh. But on a serious note, Bozeman's Act, the Strong Steadfast Act, I really don't care. It's about all of us. And not just with Parkinson's, but with chronic diseases. And I was just listening, I don't know who listens to uh, Scripps News, but there was a deep investigation into various, about eight different major insurance companies that across the country is starting to deny people and going against state regulation, against going against Medicare, and doing what they want with our lives. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when you start messing with my life, <laughs> I mean, you know, like I said, and, and I want to clarify something because I was at Pastor Matt's church and I made a comment and I said I was blessed with both assessor tremors and Parkinson's. And I was actually speaking that Sunday mm -hmm. and I made a comment in the Bible study group and I said I was blessed to have Parkinson's. But he invited me the next Sunday because it was discussing some stuff in the church and one of the ladies walked up to me and she had a chronic disease. She didn't tell me what it was. She said, I never thought about what I have to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't blessed to have Parkinson's, I wouldn't have met y'all. I won't consider y'all family. I won't consider y'all brothers, friends, total friends. 
we, we, we have become more than just a Parkinson support group. There's certain groups like the police or military. When you're in the military, that family bond, or just the, your family together, your brothers and sisters, your mothers and fathers, your neighbors. So this is really passionate to me because I don't feel a group insurance or anybody should be able to put regulations on our lives to restrict us from getting the treatment we deserve. So this is why Mr. AC could over here. And again, I want to give him a big hand for actually taking the time to, 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 and Veronica to, to hear. And like I said, we've already been talking about getting together. And Mr. Will Parker, he again the director of Riverside Hospital and some others will be getting together and coming to his office and hopefully making a change. So Strong and Steadfast is, when I say the first faith-based Parkinson's support group in Virginia, we're the first in a lot of territories breaking barriers. Like I said, I have Parkinson's. I have both yeah. types of Parkinson's. Um, George, wasn't there somebody else involved in that conversation? Um, when wasn't there somebody who called AC over and said you need to take care of this or whatever? Actually, uh, Sheriff Rahm Montgomery okay. actually invited me to one of the um, uh, rallies for the mm -hmm. Republican Party, and that's where I actually got to meet mm -hmm. AC and Veronica and. Couple of other Sheriff Ron Montgomery, who's been to our group and spoke. Um, uh, wanted to Sorry. show everybody to make sure everybody gets one of these. Gave Veronica one of these, but we actually hold a patent on this. This actually is something where Sheriff Montgomery started something with people with Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's? and yeah. he trained all of his deputies on what signs to look for. I've known Ron probably for about going on maybe seven, eight years now. We met when Sheriff Diggs was in office. Uh, Sheriff Diggs invited me at the very end. I don't know if anybody's heard of New Genesis in the beginning, but New Genesis in the beginning is on the founding director of New Genesis for 21 years. And we do a lot in all seven cities. So I was invited to this forum. Make a long story short, that's how I met Ron. When Ron, uh, I had Parkinson's, he asked me one question. What could law enforcement do? Because one, we slur. Two, we stagger. Three, I'm gonna attempt to pick this up. <laughs> I'm throwing it across, right, hitting right, right. past the mat across from me. I, I deserve it, don't worry. But, but <laughs> immediately, Ron put in a training for all his officers to get trained on work watching for signs for Parkinson's. Not only Ron, he got with other uh, chiefs and from Chesapeake, Newport News, Sheriff, uh, uh, police officer, we even got a picture of Drew, uh, Chief Drew. Um, everybody's jumping on these stickers. And what this sticker stands for is that somebody in that vehicle that has Parkinson's. And that way, because I can't sit like this in a car and look like this. So actually now you have to realize my background is 27 and a half year security specialist. I worked with ATF, I worked with state police, I worked with a lot of law enforcement agencies, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but when I have to lean like this to look, that is a threatening move to a police officer, that could get somebody killed. So the stiffness in the shoulders and the neck, this is why we came up with this. Also, we have these little cards here that actually says you have Parkinson's. So we do a lot of research, not just, again, meeting, laughing, having guest speakers. My goal is to, when I had Parkinson's, when I found out I had Parkinson's, I didn't know what I had. I got afraid. First thing I did was made a wheel. We have two children. Um, I thought it was in. I didn't know nothing. 
then I had to put in my mindset that somebody always tells me, George, whenever I call you, <laughs> and, and you always say you're blessed and highly favored. I'm not yeah. hearing that. That was kind of a slap to my face. And then it was like, okay, Happy to do it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This was a big slap to the face. But again, this I look at strong and steadfast, and a lot of people don't know, and I'll let you know, and I know. Leroy's wife, Kathy, might know. Strong and steadfast actually is out of 1 Peter, out of the Bible. We are the first praise faith purpose and support group, and we're walking forward to change laws to show people that they can have a chronic disease and still live normal lives. So I look out and I see, I don't see a purpose and support group, I see a family. And I said that earlier. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a second because, like I said, next month meeting, we're actually going to have a potluck and we're going to draw names. So every, my daughter got everybody's names and hopefully everybody come back next month and we're going to have a little potluck and gifts for everybody and, you know, we all get in that Mercedes. Do not come up take the keys from me, okay? Because I'm going to run out, out that door with those keys to my Mercedes. The Leroy will probably catch me. <laughs> huh? Yes, the limit's going to be $10. $10. If you feel it on your heart to go over, that's you, but the limit is $10. So I'm going to give this to Pastor Matt. Sure. I'll probably shake it to pieces. Even though I don't think I can. Thank you. Oh, it's catching. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, I do have a gift for Mr. Cardoza for coming here, and I would like for you to keep, this, we actually came up with our own t-shirts, and it's Strong and Steadfast, and I would like to, there you go, now I'm shaking, so hopefully that didn't mess up the picture. Okay, <laughs> but I'd like to present this to you, as even though you do not have Parkinson's, I'm fighting mm -hmm. for strong and strong people with chronic yeah. diseases. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if everybody who's here does not have a sticker on their car, or you would like to take some okay. of these back yeah. with you? Absolutely. And we hold a patent on those. Okay. So if anybody can be. Um, and then a card that says that they have. Okay. Yeah. I have been in a lot of neurology clinics. Um, I work with Dr. Karen Thomas, who probably has the largest okay. um, Parkinson's clinic in Hampton Roads, as well as Dr. Quintez in Riverside, Dr. Butler. I would love, and I also sit on the board of the APA. Yes, you do. <laughs> That's who I've seen yes, your picture yes. at. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I, I would love to be able to pass those on. I think that's fantastic. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, we I actually, um, I was trying to get it, the word out. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else has to take away. Can you just have a write-up or anything? That actually, they only have the write-up. Okay. If you go on your website okay. and scroll down, you'll actually see where you can either get it from if you're putting sheriff's office, or be pretty strong and safe. Because I would like to leave a couple flyers. <laughs> 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 oh, <sorry. laughs> <laughs> by insurance, but in the last year, the insurance company is starting to crack down on what is required in order for it to be approved. So um, it would be important for him to know that Medicare, for example, doesn't require pre-authorization. So somebody can just be implanted with DBS, um, and then a year later, they can come back and say, we're not approving this. Really? And so it doesn't come back on the patient. It would be something that the hospital would have to, you know, the hospital would have to keep the cost. 
Um, but that is something yeah. that is happening. Um, I guess post COVID, there is a team that's you know made to basically find find the holes on how we don't have to cover. Yeah. Yeah. They are, and the problem is that there's so many, you know, procedures and things, and it's the neurologist who is the one submitting the coding and the diagnosis codes and doing all of the on-off testing. Um, if they don't document all of that properly, they don't know what to do. You know, so like to be when Veronica set up this meeting, which we'd like to be a part of, what you just shared, again, is just proven the fact that insurance companies are actually changing the They're meetings. changing a lot because I just got a root canal a month ago and I didn't have to pay for it. CT scans and all that without insurance. The only thing I had to pay for was the small amount out of pocket for the root canal itself. Well, Dirk has to have a root canal. He's going to the same doctor and they're charging him for stuff that I didn't have to pay a month ago. Yes. Wow. So we're going to be calling tomorrow. <laughs> wow. We're going to be calling. Do you guys each have individual it's, deductibles? It's the same for both of us, right? But, but it's the, it's but, the but, same. But again, this is why. And, First of all, I am again and thanking Mr. Issy Sabel because I also want to thank Veronica. Actually, take her, I mean, she had this big plate of food. <laughs> 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 she had this, I mean, Sheriff McGovern had to spray it there. So she was holding this plate, and I guess the pastor side of me came out, and this poor young lady, I mean, and I was getting other people talking to me and everything, and, and make a long story short, she may be a chance to eat. Uh, <laughs> sooner or later, so I'm kind of off to the side. Okay. <laughs> she actually listened to what I had to say. And I also want to take, take a second to thank Veronica, Kelly, and AC, and Michelle. Michelle for just coming out. And at this point in time, I think everybody's drawn names. Uh, I need a name to Oh. We have one left. Who needs one? <laughs> oh, excellent. And so we'll look forward to seeing yeah, you next month. Well, there's only one left. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do is since we're going to let the ladies and the, and the caregivers and partners step out the room and they're going to plan the potluck and get away from the guys who are the ladies who are the Let's Let's close this portion of the meeting with prayer. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have prayer to close this portion of the meeting. Nobody has to go home. Uh, by all means, enjoy the rest of the meeting. But uh, you know, it's a transition point in the meeting. So, Father God, I thank you so much for every blessing that you poured out upon us today. Father, thank you for our guests tonight and uh, the, the information that was shared tonight, and just new friends and the opportunity, Father, to uh, build a family and uh, to build a family-like atmosphere. Thank you, Father, for being with us through the rest of this evening. Help us to have a safe and enjoyable time and safe travel home. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So where are we going to plan stuff? Actually, Gail knows where to go. Okay. And, and please, help yourself with pizza and um, Thank you.